on a Hawaiian morning. I'm going to go viral. And I tell this kid, my mum would love that. So, if I want to get my wife to really like me, I need to get towed in on a real man. Good morning, my voluptuous sea cucumber. Now, as that came out, is it voluptuous or voluptuous? Don't really know. But I realized over the... Dude, the weekend has been pretty... <laughs> the weekend's been wild. What did you do? Well, I kind of just stayed at home all weekend with my wife and son and kind of had some nice family time. Also, it wasn't crazy. Well, no, it was, cra it was crazy because... I had lots of thoughts about content. Crazy thoughts about content. Oliver, what does that even mean? Good question. All right, so we've been trying to develop the, or I've been trying to develop the TikTok storytelling. I just feel like it's been too stiff. I'm doing it for the views and Here's the thing, the videos do well, or they always did do well, but I wasn't able, I haven't been able to build any sense of community over what, like a year of doing the storytelling. And the whole point of doing storytelling was to be able to do that. Because I'll give you a bit of insight into why I think community is so important, is more important than just getting large amounts of views. because. I've said this in lots of videos recently. Every single video is like a new post. It's like posting to a whole new account. You have no idea if it's going to do well. You have no idea if it's going to go viral or if it's just going to hit a couple of thousand views. And that is because no one has... It doesn't feel like people have watched one of my videos and been like, I can't wait for the next one. So... When we get home, we'll talk through some of the ideas I've had. One of them being Rob Deerdex Fantasy Factory. My wife mentioned it to me yesterday. She was like, have you ever seen it? I was like, no, I've never seen it. Like I know of Rob Deerdex, I've never seen it. She was oh, the Fantasy Factory, let's watch it. So we binged a couple of episodes last night and it's oh, the geniusness of it is so good. So we'll go through some of that. And then I think we'll try and implement one of them into the hand warming video, the, the beeswax video, the beeswax glove video. Now, just trust me on this. I think we're going to try something. Uh, oh. Oh. Screw it. I'll just... Will I talk about this topic now? I'm sure there'll be plenty of other topics. I was in the gym yesterday and there was what looked like a high school kid. I was in the changing room, well, we were both in the changing room. He was in front of a big mirror and he had his shirt off and he was kind of just like dilly-dallying around with his phone and I, it was obvious to me, because I'm so smart, it was obvious what he was doing. He wanted to um, like take some photos or videos of his physique which I'm not, I, I do have the opinion that you can do that stuff at home, but it's not hurting anyone. So there's no real issue with doing it at a public gym. Anyway, he wanted to do it, but he wasn't going to do it until I'd gone. So he wanted an empty change room. And I understand that. That's, that's, it's kind of, you know, embarrassing when someone else is watching you do that kind of stuff. And so I hurried up and on my way out, I just, I looked at him and I said, like just be confident, just like do what you're going to do and just be confident doing it. Quick exchange of words and then I left. And I realized after the fact, actually it's only this morning that I realized that I tell myself, I've just given this dude a message as if I live it myself and I still get in eight years of doing this and I still get embarrassed talking to someone sorry, uh, filming myself in public with someone else watching. Now I try to live on this idea that I don't, like I shouldn't care what other people think. What I do, I should do what I want to do within reason. But 
Um, I don't always embody that. So is it, do you call it hypocritical? Or do you believe it's a good thing? So like in this case where I'm not fully confident with filming myself in public and I tell this kid to be fully confident with filming himself in public, is that, that is hypocritical by nature, but is that positive hypocriticality? Even if you're not able to fully embody something, is it right to tell someone to give someone a piece of advice that you have not yet fully embodied? I'm not sure. I, th I feel like that is a good thing. I would do that again to someone else, even though I'm still working on it. I feel like that's a good thing to pass on to someone. I don't know. Let's go talking through these um, different storytelling types because I think I think some of them could be winners. Also went to the gym immediately after walking the dogs this morning because it's meant to snow pretty hard the next two days. It's currently raining, so that's not a great sign for the snow. But we should get a lot of inches. I don't know what that means. All right, I'll see you. See you on the flippity flip. Oh. Young sire, you are coming with me. I haven't thought this through because the door's not unlocked. All right, I've got to reset the router, but I have been doing some research, not reset, I'm gonna switch it over because it's being stupid. But I've been doing some research on Rob Durdex, the fantasy factory, trying to figure out Basically, I think just like trying to understand more about it, but I've come up with some really interesting things. I might have just put a hole in the wall with my laptop. Um, first thing is, you have a program, a TV show, which is it performs two things just incredibly well. Number one, it performs entertaining really well. And number two, the brand partnerships in there are just so well integrated that you can't help but you just don't notice that you're being marketed to the whole time. And so, which is really where I've been trying to go with my videos on TikTok. Like, I don't think any of them really sound like an ad. And there's no talk about specs and whatnot. But the problem with, is that plugged in? Yeah, the problem with doing TikTok the way I do it is that there's no flow from one video to the next. So what is it about, I don't know if you've seen Fantasy Factory, but if you have, you'll notice that well, it's not like every video leads on from the next. They actually don't, I don't think. They, each episode is unique, but it's all under this umbrella of how these characters live in this life. Now, the way this show is set up is that Rob is the main character. He's the one that's going to be doing things, coming up with the ideas, and everyone else is reacting off of him. So if we consider Rob the main character, and he goes and does his things, everything around him is branded. Like, you just look at the, the place that he's in, the warehouse that he's created. The walls are covered in branding. There's monster stickers everywhere. There's DC stickers everywhere. His clothing. It's so flipping, so good. And what if I could, number one, I have goals of doing bigger, more adventurous ideas than the ones I'm doing now, but budgeting constrictions are kind of constricting what we're doing. So 
okay, what I mean by that is in the future, I would love for brands to essentially do the same type of thing so I can have brands' branding that fits and aligns with me and my values of wanting to experiment, having fun while doing it, finding things that are cool, finding things that are interesting, and just being up for trying them. If I can get, if I can find brands that are into that, and then just integrate them into this video, I'm not talking like, okay, now we have a 30 second segment to talk about this brand. Like that's, I hate that. I'm talking where I don't even have to mention anything about the brand or product because the viewer is able to see that the video wouldn't be possible without those brands, products or services because of how they align with what's being done. And I, I guess I'm just talking while, dude, Google Fiber, where I live, absolutely ass, straight up boobatronics. This is like my fifth time of calling. I think we're, we're paying for 500 meg. And did I save what we got yesterday? This is, this is just a normal day. That's, what time is this? Is it eight? So yeah, 9 p.m. last night. Eight megabytes, eight meg down, which is download speed, and then eight meg upload speed. It's such a joke. Anyway. Um, I forgot what I was saying, so I'm gonna stop it, see what I was saying and come back. <laughs> okay, now I know what I was talking about. And I guess what I was uh, not understanding. So if we look at my videos, the brand integrations, the brand, like let's say a, uh, a, a, one of the at home sauna videos where I did it outside in the snow, that video wouldn't be possible without the battery pack that I was using, which was branding for the video. But I don't think I, I was, I wasn't thinking about it from the perspective of how do I make this integral to the video concept? I was just thinking, what's a cool way that I can use the device? Like what's, what's a idea I can have that means I have to be using something like a battery pack. Like that was my thinking, not let's integrate the, let's, I guess, I, I guess I was thinking it the same way, just not as succinct. Excuse me. Um, so what I'm trying to do now is I'm going to watch a couple of his videos from the Fantasy Factory and just, I, I can't find anything online about his, the storytelling style, like a breakdown of it. So I'm just going to reverse engineer it myself. But I was, I picked out a, a good few things <laughs> just from last night of watching, like the video starts off, you're not really sure what's going to happen but he drives a forklift into the fantasy factory and he's got a massive box on this forklift and he starts doing donuts and the massive box falls off. Something in it breaks, the box all opens up and then as people come to figure out what it is, you realize that actually that's meant to be a cage designed to keep people safe from a lion that's going to attack them. So he's he set up the video idea of what the whole thing's going to be about, which is people being in a cage, being attacked by a lion. But the massive catch to this is the fact that actually the box is broken. Will it even hold up when the lion attacks? Which is the question that we all have, whether we realize it or not. And then 
you progress through the video. I think we stopped watching just after that. But that's your question. That's what you want to find out. Do you want to find out? Yeah, you want to see for this crazy idea, but you also want to find out, are they going to be safe inside of that box? I love and I hate seeing new, having these kind of epiphanies because it means I feel compelled to change what I'm already doing, even though it may or may not be, even though it may be working. Um, some of the other stories, like styles I've, I was looking at was this girl who was making like 2017 YouTube, YouTube vlog style things. Um, just like listening to music while she does her makeup. It makes me think why, like the hand in beeswax video. What if I just filmed, I mean, it's only 10 minutes long from the moment you put your hand in to take it out. I'm thinking about doing it two ways. What if I just film the whole thing and then I just edit down what happens and what happens happens. That's, that's boring. That's boring, isn't it? That there's no like upset of like what could happen, what goes wrong. Like I guarantee you that in this, the tiger with the, um, this big box that broke in the fancy factory idea I just gave, I guarantee you that was all written in. So you get the box, do something to break it. And of course, in his style, he does something crazy to break it. Maybe that's how I, is that a better way to plan out videos that forget my style, the way I want to do things, J just plan out the story as in like, get something, break it, try and fix it. What happens to the rest of the video? Something else goes horribly wrong. Make a decision like, and then see what happens after that. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go and, I'm gonna skim through a couple of episodes write down like how does he do the, what I would call the catch, like this, sorry, the crisis, this thing that goes so horribly wrong you wonder if they can even continue or not. How does he do that and how does he come out of it? Dude. I feel like I have huge visions for this. and where this could go. I'm just not at a place to make a huge amount out of them yet. What stupid thinking. Hang on. Let me call Google Fiber and I'm gonna think about that a little bit. What's really holding me back? Is it just money? I think so. I'll be back. Of, of course I'll be back. I don't know what your plans are for today, but mine kind of changed slightly. Don't ask me how we got here. But I've just seen that Target have a mini sco snow skateboard. I'm going to re-say that. I've just found that Target have a mini snow skateboard. I don't know if it's mini, but I'm going to go and get it. So they've got three left. It's snowing right now and it's meant to keep going for the next couple of days. So I've got to get there before some little shit beats me. That's where we're going. I don't know, these two are having a nice game of touch each other's bumpers. Oh, who's winning? <laughs> you stupid. All right, so actually I saw a TikTok the other day, like maybe a week or so ago about a snow skateboard. And I started looking at snow skateboards on Amazon. They're like $75. I was like, oh, that, that might be kind of cool. I didn't buy one, didn't pull the trigger, but I was just ordering something else on Amazon for, <laughs> for the birth, for the birth. That's a weird thing to say without context. We're about to have a child, another child. 
and we're doing a home birth. So I'm like decorating the place for Shay. Anyway, ordered that and of course it popped up as like the item that I was also looking at. And I just so happened to Google it. I don't know why I Googled it, but I found that Target have some, so I'm going to get one. It's like $35 and we're going to see if it works. Not today, probably tomorrow, most likely tomorrow. This is, do you remember last week I said that I think the one thing that is holding me back at the moment is thinking about generating revenue the whole time? And I told myself that I would do a week of not thinking about money. Like just thinking about doing ideas. Now I haven't fully embraced that because many of the ideas I have and want to do, do require an input of money. <laughs> but $35, I think we can, we can manage, we can swing that. So it's gonna be cold. I don't have the right gear here, but we're gonna try it. And it's gonna be fun. I'm actually really inspired by Rob Durdex, The Fantasy Factory. It's basically what I've been, without even realizing that that was a thing, it's basically what I've been trying to get to. Like my wife and I have goals of when, you know, the revenue starts to get where I expect it to, like I'm, I'm working towards, we get a place that has its own bit of land and I can start doing just whatever it is I want to do. I don't have to think about the cost, well, within reason, the cost of it and being able just to do it because it's fun. Now I, you think about that and you think, oh, what a waste of money. And you think about these huge, call them YouTubers or whatever, that waste money on doing these things. And for the, the normal person, you look at it and think, oh, what a waste of money, especially in a climate where most people are struggling or at least watching what they spend their money on. And that, that's the kind of thing that I can see like holding me back thinking, oh, I can't do this because it's not relatable. But my whole p persona is, if I could, I would live a different life. I wouldn't live this like more of a conservative life. And why should I let someone else's opinion stop me from doing that? Especially when it's getting deep here, isn't it? Especially when I've lived this life where it's like my wife and I are choosing not to spend money on too many things. Like I, I made, I think I put this down in a note yesterday or the day before. Uh, when we get to a place of where I want to be and money's not so much of an issue, you bet your ass I'll be buying like nice sweats and nice hoodies instead of wearing like a, like something that has decent quality instead of the crap that I wear at the moment. It's not crap, but I mostly wear just generic uh, sweats and stuff. I, I treated myself to these ones. <laughs> but neither of us really spend that much money, but it'd be nice to spend, to, to have things that are better quality and like fit better. I'm not talking about switching up to wearing Versace and Gucci. Neither of us, unless ironically, neither of us are ever gonna buy that. Neither of us are going out and buying a brand new Audi. I say that because there's one in front of me. Let's go inside. My wife said the snow was really wet today. Hmm. Okay, let's go. Oh, skid him a rink a dink a dink, skid him a rink a do. I am. Go on, mate. Get at me. Give me you bastard. Oh. Okay, just checking the mic isn't falling off. Okay, which aisle 
are we going to? We are going to aisle C36. Oh, it's right here. Only 30 more to go. Hold on a minute. Look at the bloody size of that. What do you do with that on a daily basis? Do you carry that around? I do have a video concept that I kind of want to do, which is progressively getting a bigger and bigger jug. So like moving up to like a massive Stanley or something. Oh my gosh, this thing is tiny. So one of those. A couple of different options in here. Do I like this one or do I want one that my feet stick to? I feel like it's gonna be more fun without having my feet stuck to something. Look at that. My mum would love that. My mum's like a child, I swear. Okay, so we've got that one. So I don't think that would go. That's just a that's just a piece of wood. I mean, this one's not got too many ridges to be fair. Let's do it. I will be doing this wearing wellies and I do not have the right gloves and I do not know if this is gonna work, but I wanna be doing a jump like that. All right, I'm gonna pay, I'll see you in the car. Bloody hell, flurrying. Oh God, I'm bloody covered. Um, I just came to this realization that I think the reason my wife actually likes me it's because I found that she's kind of a fan of Rob Durdeck, and the way she describes Rob Durdeck is like, he's an idiot in an endearing way. <laughs> That's how she describes idiot. It's like her use of the word idiot is somewhat endearing. So I think it's fair to say that I'm an absolute I think twat is the better word, but we'll go with idiot for now. And perhaps that's why she likes me. So, if I want to get my wife to really like me, we have to make this whole, what, whatever I've talked about today, the fantasy factory idea thing come true, and then she'll like me. I, I don't think the marriage, being together as long as we have, and two kids sharing a house together, I don't think that stuff really says I love you enough. <laughs> All right, did I make some, I think I wrote down some topics for us to discuss, darling. That ain't it. That's not it either.
Um, oh yeah. You know how I kind of talk about, even in the clip before this, the video before this, I, I talk about where I want to be in the future, and like where I expect to be. Not out of, I expect things to be given to me, but out of, this is where I plan on being, like this is what I'm working towards now. And it, part of that, I think, there's like, the, I, I feel a weird sense of arrogance in that, but also the, sorry, I think it can be construed. People could look at it and say, oh, that's quite an arrogant way to look at life. But then you can also look at that the way I look at it and say, what you should be positive with where you want to be. You should have your goals on where you want to be and work toward those. Have an idea of what things are going to look like after and take the steps now to get there. Like I tell you, like I watched a, a it was a Theo Vaughn clip the other day and it was essentially him just like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know where I'm going. I just know that I'm trying. Like, I'm, I don't know that I'm doing it right, but I'm just, I know that I'm trying. And that, it, it, this is so weird, right? Because if, if any random person says that, you don't really take notice of it. But if someone who is somewhat influential says that, you take a second guess, don't you? Sorry, you take, you think about it for a second. And I think the majority of us don't exactly know where we're going and what we're doing. It may look like it from the outside. Like you may, I mean, I think seeing if you were to follow these videos, you would see that actually I don't have it figured out. But if you were to look at my, oh, this might be a stupid thing to say, but if you were to look at my TikTok and the views that are on those videos, you might look at that and think this guy's got it figured out. He knows what he's doing. But actually, I'm like, I'm second guessing myself every day on if I'm making the right decisions for the content. I'm constantly trying to evaluate what I'm doing to see if I can do it better, to see if I can do it in a way that I would enjoy it more. I'd say it would be easy just to keep doing what I have been doing, but at the same time, I don't think I would find it easily to like mentally deal with that. Like I'd, I'd constantly have this thing in the back of my mind telling me, should you keep doing that? Should you, that's not what you're like, if I stick on the same video style, like that's not what you're actually wanting to be doing, is it? You're wanting to be doing something different. Why don't you try it? Oh, you didn't try it. You stuck with what you were doing. Well, that's a problem then, isn't it? Because now you're stuck in not wanting to try new things. Do you? Do you think like that? Is that how the normal person thinks? <laughs> There's no way that's how the normal person thinks. Because like, while I, I don't know, deal with it. It's also kind of debilitating. I don't know. But I did also see another clip. It was Captain Bezos. So Jeff Bezos talking, uh, Lex Friedman was the guy doing the interview or the podcast. First of all, I haven't seen much of his stuff, but every clip I've seen of that Lex guy seems boring as hell. The way he talks, his demeanor, everything about him seems boring as hell. Now, I've never watched a full episode, so I don't know if like there's something I'm not mi I'm missing. But Bezos was essentially saying, no good idea comes perfect. In that means you could have an idea but if you implement that idea, it will not be perfect first time. You'll need to work at it, develop it, iterate. And he says, when him or someone on his team comes up with an idea, they 
uh, do what they call wandering. They just wander with the idea. They think about different ways to look at it. They try and evolve it, develop it until eventually you can turn it into an idea that's worth something. It's really hard to do that when you're on your own, like me, for example. I'm not saying... I keep going into this like defensive mode of... I need to defend what I'm saying. I like the idea of working on my own. I, I really like the idea... I was speaking to Stevie Sells on Friday. And I think we were both in the same part of like, it would be nice to have a filmer around, but and like someone else working with you. But then you end up like having to define your schedule also around someone else. Like I like the idea of being able to do whatever I want, whenever I want, you know, aside from the wife and kids. <laughs> So yeah, what I mean by that, where I'm getting at with that is the, when we, when I plan out the pod vlogs on here, I really want to get to a space where we are, where we are planning it out interactively. It'd be cool to do like a live session whenever I do the planning of videos. And we do that together. But at the moment, like when I plan out these videos, I try and let my mind wander and try and think about different things, different ways to do it. How could I do this differently? All right. Let's get home and keep going. Might give this a try, might not. There's not enough snow yet. It's coming down hard, but I don't think there's enough. All right, I'll see you at home. Hello, uh, Future Oliver here. The planning that we did, that we're about to do, sorry, is going to be long and slow. I hope you kind of like the idea of like working through the whole process instead of just me thinking through all this stuff independently and then just kind of showing you what I've done. I feel like there could be some valuable stuff to this, so feel free to skip it though, because it's long and there are some boring parts. If I can, I'll attach the waveform at the bottom of the video so you can see where the silences are. Would that be useful? I don't know. If I can, I will. If it's too much work, I won't bother. And then you can just skip the whole thing. Alright, enjoy. Hello. Alright, I don't know how to tell you this, but I'm on another level right now. Okay? So, I just spent a little bit of time watching one of the Fantasy Factory ed episodes. And I broke, it was Hawaiian Man Adventure. And essentially, high level, the video is about Rob who sees a guy doing, I can't remember what you call it, pull-in surfing. We get towed in on a jet ski to then surf a ma massive wave. And he wants to be able to go and do it himself because he really idolizes the guy that does it. So, I'm just, I'm trying to think about how we loop it into this because I want, I, I really, really liked the way it was done. I'm not sure if it would work on TikTok this way, uh, but I'm interested in trying it. So, what's, we would say the most I still think a hook is important. Fuck. I hate, I hate, I hate, I hate the hook part of a video. Because it seems so fake. It's like, listen to this thing I'm going to do. But it has to be there. It's like the title of the video. It's like someone deciding if they want to keep watching or not. So, all right. Here's how this episode sets up. Rob is doing something, he's dragging this massive chair, weird. And he asked one of his, uh, who is Drama, asked Drama to pull a camera out of his back pocket. He then 
sets up the chair, sits in it, asks him to record, and starts recording like a, if I die, this is why you're watching this, and this is what you should do, blah, blah, blah. So essentially setting up the whole video that what he's about to do could possibly lead to death. It's brilliant. It's so flipping good. And then he goes in to explain the actual video. So before you even know what the video is, you're thinking, what the hell is he about to do that's going to potentially kill him? So that whatever the idea is that comes in next, the first thing on your mind is, oh God, he could die doing this. It's genius. But the catch is that he's never surfed before. So set up want. Uh, let's let's write this in. It is dark in here, isn't it? By the way, I'll have to drop at any moment because uh, I'm on Ruggy duty. So I've got him on the <laughs> iPad over there. Um, so in my style, the flaw is that he wants to be a real man. Okay. His flaw is that he doesn't think he's a real man and wants to be a real man. Uh, his, the setup want is record video. Record death video. I'm going to put a note down here. Um, TV versus TikTok. Huge difference that I had to be, that I will have to be very careful of. So he wants to record a death video. Uh, how does this fit in? This is like the elephant, isn't it? Wants to record death video because wants to, I don't know what you'd call it, jet ski, I don't, we'll just call it surf, knowing that it's a little bit bigger than just surfing. So then, the catch is that he's never surfed before. And the point of no return is that he's telling his friend he wants to do it. How do you know? That he started it. get someone in to help him. That's right. Now, this is actually what happens first, and then he, you find out the catch, so he gets in someone to help him. I don't know if that is the point of no return or if the point of no return is him. Like you see how this is all twisted. This is me thinking through it. <laughs> Uh, uh, sorry, essentially what I'm trying to do here is take... I'm trying to reverse engineer his formula, and at the moment I'm trying to fit his formula into mine. But maybe I shouldn't. Before I, like, try a completely new formula, I want to watch a couple more episodes and break it down. 
it's just it's just it just given me so many more ideas or just like opened up my way of thinking as to how I can do each of these segments. Whoops. Imagine this. Bearbell are a sponsor of this vlog. I love eating those. That just comes in. Imagine this board, the rim of this board is a sponsor. The clothing is a sponsor. The storage I use, my computer, my camera, mic, tech, the um, monitor I'm using, all of this stuff, like the drink, everything could be branded if, and I, I don't know how you would feel about that. To be honest, if I was watching someone else do this same thing, and I was thinking the same way as them, I would think, hell yeah, you've managed to make a decent chunk with something you're already doing without like disrupting it and ruining the viewer's experience. If you can make an, if you can make a video, if you can make an ad that doesn't feel like an ad, I think you're winning. I think you have, I think that's like a huge amount of respect to your viewers, but you're not trying to sell them. Which, being the angel I am, is what I've been trying to do on TikTok. So, <laughs> we're starting. So he, he does something weird, which is kind of like... <sighs> Let's go into this topic now of TV versus TikTok. This show, I think, ran from 2007 to 2014. I don't, something like that, 15. And so the, at this video I watched, I think this was season four. And by this point, people know about the series. They know what to expect. They know that they're gonna get what they have come for at the end of the video. Even though in this video that I just watched, the wave surfing he's showing at the beginning is like on massive waves. But the wave he did it on was by no means a small wave, but it was way smaller. And he stood up and rode on it, but didn't like properly do it, right? So he wasn't good at it. He just did it once or twice. But people know they're going to get a payoff in the video, which is seeing him do it. Whereas on TikTok, uh, sorry, and because it's TV, and because he's built up that beforehand, people are much less likely to stop watching and to go and find something else. Whereas TikTok, you hit a new audience so much of the time and it's so easy for someone to scroll onto something else. Right, so there are so many sections that I would love to do that like Rob's done in these videos, but they just wouldn't work because as soon as you go off topic, in a TikTok, people just leave. Unless there's no like real goal to the video to begin with. Like it's like a flipping makeup video and some girls telling you a story of how she just got wankered the night before, fell asleep on a half eaten pizza and then woke up with a flipping garlic naan stuff down her bra. I don't I'd have never heard that story before, but I'm so, I'm so in my own head about all of this. Oh, Riggy's up, I'm gonna put him back down. I'll be right back. I haven't even gotten into the 
main part of the video, like this section. Which is weird because you know what? You know what I've just realized? I get a different color pen. First colors I've seen are black and green. Blue, you'll do. The setup want actually isn't this. The setup want is to become real man because wants to call it surf, right? So this means that the first goal he has to achieve is becoming a real man. Um, on the way to his whole goal of surfing. So he has never surfed before. Wait, so he gets someone in to help him, but he's also never surfed before. He, he says these, he flips these around. So this is mentioned before this one, but I guess that's where I am following my structure and thinking it has to be perfect. But you know, you, like, that's, this is a huge catch to the whole thing. Like he's trying to do this crazy thing, but he's never surfed before. And to get himself in the right headspace, he needs to become a real man. So what does he do? He goes to Hawaii and ends up going through what he calls man camp. And then the crisis point. So sorry, like the whole process here is man camp, which is actually the majority of the video. And then The crisis point is, what did I write down? Can't find me bloody mouse. The crisis point is he is, wait, so man camp, he finishes man camp, starts surfing. And then the crisis point is that he gets destroyed, so falls off. He then tries again. And then you off with finish off with like, doesn't need to feel like a real man. To get through life. So let's try for the snowboard thing we just bought. Let's try planning that out. The, the interesting thing is that I didn't see, I really like the idea of a banana and I want to keep that. Um, but that wasn't in his video. It was just like, the crisis point is, oh my gosh, he's doing it, but he falls off. So he tries it again, cool. Uh, here's the thing. The idea here of going to man camp to try and gain his manliness to then go and do the surfing. I'm not going to say it wouldn't work on TikTok, but I don't know how it works because the way I see it, 
people are not bothered. Like you go off task, you get you stray too far from the hook, and people don't. I think people's trust issues come in, and they end up thinking, "Well, I'm not actually going to get what I came here for, so I'll I'll save myself time now because I, perhaps the next piece of content that I scroll to is going to be really good." Right, but that's my assumption. <laughs> but what's horrible about what I do is that a day in the grand scheme of things is not very much time to be wasting to try and figure out if there's a new way to do this. But when your income is defined by how many views you get, in one area, that being TikTok, if you end up with a load of videos that are terrible views because you're like just trying something new out, then brands aren't going to be interested. Plus, if a video flops, you end up now having used that idea and you, I mean, you could do it again, but I don't love the idea. Sometimes I do, but most of the time I don't love the idea of just like redoing something. Okay, so snowboarding. I want to say there's no way in hell that someone like Rob Deerdeck, who has been a professional skater, has never surfed. There's no way, surely. That has to have been made up. And the way he got up on his board was not an amateur. In my professional opinion. Snowboarding. Should we try a death wish video? Should we just try? This, should we try the video I just watched and see how it does? Dude. You know, I mentioned earlier, how do you, like, it seems like the Fantasy Factory you always start in the same place. You always start in this warehouse where this idea comes to fruition and then you plan it out and then you end up coming back to the warehouse. I need that in my videos. I need, I need this room to be the home, the hub. Do I? How do I start off the video? Shall I, rec shall I record a death video? So, we can't do it exactly the same, can we, or can we? Set up want. So the setup want is to snowboard. The point of no, uh, so the point of, sorry, give me one second. As if you're sat there waiting on my every word. <laughs> so I want to snowboard.
dude, what if the hook, instead of being today I tried snowboarding, the hook is me starting off my death video. And then Frickin' sausages. I don't know. Setup one is to snowboard. No, the overall goal is to snowboard. The setup one, set up want is to get a snowboard. How is this done? No, you don't actually, so in this third deck video, you don't actually find out why he's really doing it, which is to be a real man, until you find out that he wants to get pulled into a massive wave and you find out that he's never surfed before. Then you find out why. Okay, so God, I'm so, I I'm finding this really difficult to merge. So you have the the hook, I think, which is going to be the death video and explaining that I want to try and snowboard. So I have to, but I have to go and get a snowboard first. So the point of no return, snowboard target. So he gets a snowboard from target and then he has the catch that I'm thinking you could do something small like there's no bindings on it or that I've never s snowboarded before. Let's do never snowboarded because skied. That looks more like skied, but skied, but I'm not sure. Okay. Where Gosh. This must be painful to watch if you're watching this. I'm trying to think about how the video comes to fruition. Why do I want to go and do this? Is it because I saw a snowboarding video? What if I want to do a big air jump? It's snowing. I see a big air jump on TikTok. I want to go and do it. So we can say that, because I have snowboard and I don't want to lie about this. So, snowboarded, but never been off jumps. So 
So then now the goal, instead of just being able to snowboard, the goal is now to do some kind of jump. So what's the next step? I'm just watching Ruggie's up again. And then I guess we have this whole process of like learning to snowboard. Wait. Start boarding. Uh, it's hard to do with no bindings, hard with no bindings. So then, what else can we try? Start boarding, it's hard with no bindings. Try little jump. Try a bunny hop slash ollie. Yeah, uh, fall over. And then we're gonna try build, jump, and the crisis is that it's bigger than expected and fall off. Okay, so then the, you could have the I try again or put him down again, I'll be right back. All right, Google Fiber should be here very shortly. And I had this idea that uh, instead of just like trying again, build ramp bigger. What I noticed as a theme in this video is that he's uh, maybe, it's hard to tell because I'm so fixated on it, doing what I do. But it felt like the go this flaw of wanting to be a real man was a huge part to this story. And perhaps that's something that I'm missing when I plan these out. It's kind of like an, somewhat of an afterthought. Um, So here's the, here's the video for me. We have the hook, which is the, the death video. It sucks. Like, uh, here's how I imagine. Here's I. You have a normal, a normal hook, which is like today I'm going to do this, and then it comes into a shot of me. It's like a, a chair that's set up in the middle of the room, and I'm walking over to the chair. I'm like, if you're listening to this, it's because I died. What if I explain the hook while I'm walking over to this chair? And then I go into what my death video will be or whatever it's called. <sighs> I'm trying to merge two different styles 
bit of video. One of them is a guy who's able to have a conversation to share his point of view, and the other, which is me telling the viewer what's happening. One of them is just way more authentic than the other. Dude, I don't know. I'm just like drawing blanks. <laughs> Thankfully, I already have two kids. <laughs> one of them, one of them's on the way. Anyway, all right. So we have the hook and the death video, and <laughs> dude. I imagine that I'm telling this story because I can't... I like the idea of telling the story as it happened from here, as if like, I'm just retelling the story. Like I, I went and did it, like filmed loads of bits, but now I'm just retelling the story. So I go into my death video, I start talking a bit there, and then I switch out to like me sat in here saying, that, you know, like where the idea came from that I saw this big air video and I wanted to snowboard and it was snowing outside. I don't know, dude, I'm coming back to this. I don't know where the Google Fiber guy is, but I've had some good ideas. So the hook is saying what I'm gonna do while I'm, it's a video of me going down the hill by the jump. Then it cuts off right before I hit the jump, obviously. So then it goes into a recount of me like I was sat, like I saw this big air TikTok and I wanted to try it. But I live in Kansas and there are no snowboards around and it's already snowing. So my best option was to go to Target and get one. But I've never been off jumps before, which I want to fit in somewhere earlier. And then I just start like doing it. Just whatever happens, happens. I think the set, like this section, is the most important. And then we try all these things and build jump, but the, like I just fall off the jump, I can't do it. So instead of just trying again, I decide to make the ramp bigger for some reason. But what is my biggest problem in all of this? Not confident. Uh, don't have confidence to do it. Uh, and then the finale would be can always build up confidence.
That's not even a word. Yeah. And one of the styles I was thinking about for telling these stories from now on, I want to get myself into this place imagining that I'm just telling a friend this story. So like I'm just on FaceTime or something telling them the story. And try to make it as conversational as possible versus this happened and then we did this because of this and then that, that, that. I think more of the rawness, sorry Duda, the authenticity is going to come through that way. I think. Yeah, maybe. I'm finding this so difficult to think straight with so much going on in my head about different styles and ideas. It's just swirling. But I think this is the right, I think the right move is to just like try and plan something out with this. But notice that we've taken out the death, filming a death video. Like that's me filming a death video because, dude, I need to think about this, sorry. Okay, I had a good idea for the intro, right? So I'm kind of setting it up now. Oopsie. I'm kind of see where I'm going. To my friends and family, I didn't make it. See, I saw this snowboarding video of a guy going off a massive jump and I thought, I'd like to try that. Except I don't have a snowboard, I don't have any experience going off of big jumps and I don't even know if I have the confidence for it. But I did find that Target have some and there's three in stock, so I'm gonna go get those now. But it's snowing right now and I see that Target have one in stock, so I'm gonna go get that now. All right, I have record the intro, it's gonna be very different from my normal intros. But, I'm hoping it pays off, I'm hoping it works. Because I quite like this idea versus just a straight hook to the face. So having recorded that section, it's flipping tough. So I have this mindset that I need to be like a changing shot every few seconds. But just thinking about the words that I used, I don't know how I'm gonna change that because it's all like leading up to what I'm about to do. I don't know, we can always, we're here to experiment, aren't we? That's what it's all about. So, and we can always refilm the intro. We can try it different ways. I'll try it with a hook as well. But from where we are right now, I've covered all of the sort of want, point of no return, the catch, and we can get into trying it. So I'll grab it from Target, and then go and try. Just see what happens, and then I'll, I'll script whatever else comes afterwards. And I've, I've set it up that I'm having to build up the confidence throughout this. Dude, these are the ones that I like. It's taken a long time. What was the part? I was just chatting with Shay about this. 
there was one realization that I had. Uh, I don't know. I'll write it down if I remember. But I'm going to film this tomorrow morning, script it, edit it, and I would like to then move on to the the beeswax hand video. I also think I need to start defining... I don't... I, I feel like... Maybe I'll just define them for me. Like, what are my, my key, my core pillars for what I'm doing? Like, because I'm not going to go and do a... nail brushing tutorial. Like what I do has to be fun, exciting, educational. The words I used earlier, whatever they were. <laughs> yeah, okay, all right, cool. Well, thanks for watching. I'm re oh, that's right, I'll say bye now. And the next bit you film, Oliver, you're gonna put in earlier just to let let the viewer know that it's gonna be slow. Cool, so end the video here, bye, I'll pretend. Nice. I am actually going to do it. <laughs>